So, well, Chira, thank you very much for, uh, for having me here. Uh, it's a real pleasure to, to be here. Um, so, I was here at DENAP to uh, basically present on the challenges of managing the civil service in developing countries. And when I presented here, in essence, what I was doing is I was drawing on, on data that we collected over the last two years. And over the last two years, we've surveyed over 20,000 public employees in 10 countries. And based on that data, we now have some relatively strong evidence what are sort of the core challenges of managing people in developing countries, in governments, and what can you do to address those, those core challenges. And so what I wanted to do is, is talk to you briefly about sort of three core challenges for which we now have relatively good evidence. And so the first challenge for which we now have relatively good evidence is the challenge of depoliticizing the civil service. So if we think about the civil service, then we take it as, 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 as a given and we, we, we accept, and that's also very legitimate, that at the very top levels of the civil service, the appointments, the promotions, the pay rises are decided by politicians. And we think of that as legitimate because it gives governing parties a chance to control bureaucracy. And we want that because we want public sector institutions to be in some way responsive to those that are elected officials. But what we see is that in many developing countries, politicization doesn't stop there. But instead, politicization extends through the levels of hierarchy. So even at middle levels and lower levels, the way you get a job, the way you get promoted, the way you get pay rises is by having some sort of political connection, knowing a party politician, knowing somebody with political connections. And we, we now have data that basically suggests that in most developing countries, throughout these levels of hierarchy, political criteria are more important than merit criteria in getting a job. So why is, that, why is it a problem? So from a theoretical perspective, there's a couple of reasons why we think it's a problem. It's, it's, a, it's a problem or it's a challenge because, of course, in the first place, it means that competence is becoming less important in public service because you're choosing people based on their political loyalty, not based on their competence. It's also a challenge and a problem because it means that those that work in public service owe an obligation to somebody for their last job, for their last pay rise, for their last promotion. They owe political loyalty, they owe political obligation to political superiors. And as a result of that, they're not thinking necessarily of themselves solely as public servants, but their role identity changes. They also think of themselves as political servants because they owe these politicians their job, their pay rise. And beyond that, of course, the incentives of those that work for government change. So those that work for government now face an incentive to try to please political superiors more than to serve the public. Because if you please political superiors in these systems, you can get pay rises, you can get promotions. And that, of course, can encourage political corruption, political clientelism. And when we look at the data, that's precisely what we see. So we see that political servants, that, sorry, that public servants that get their jobs through political connections, that get promotions through political connections, that get pay rises through political connections, tend to be less motivated to work hard, uh, tend to be uh, more corrupt, tend to engage more in political clientelism. And we ran surveys in a variety of countries, for instance in Chile or for instance in the Dominican Republic, and we always see sort of these similar patterns of negative effects of politicization. So the first sort of core civil service management challenge in developing countries then is politicization. And so the first way of making civil services work in developing countries is to try to depoliticize the civil service. So that's the first thing we see in the data. The second, and how do you depoliticize? So that these prescriptions are typically relatively straightforward, and this is something we've known for a long time. So you recruit pe public servants not based on their political criteria, but based on their merit. You promote public servants based on merit, not on political criteria. And you give pay rises based on merit, not on political criteria. Now, when you do this, so when you're reducing political interference in the management of civil services, you create a second challenge. And this is also something we see in the data. And that is you're oftentimes creating very autonomous bureaucracies. And that's, of course, something that's also a challenge here in Brazil. And in these very autonomous bureaucracies, public servants do no longer have performance incentives. So they're autonomous bureaucracies in the sense that I, as a public servant, get a job in government, and then I can keep that job for life, irrespective of what I do, and I pr get promoted based on my years of experience, almost irrespective of what I do, so long as I come to my job and I don't engage in misconduct. Now, we know that performance incentives can have a lot of negative effects on public servants if they're excessive. They can lead to gaming, to cheating, they can crowd out your intrinsic motivation to serve the public. But if you don't have any performance incentives, so if there's no way for you as a public servant to get ahead in your career or get a better position or get a pay rise in your career, if you work harder, then that of course 
can frustrate public servants, that can disengage public servants. Because if I have, a, as a public servant, put in really hard work and I see the public servant next to me is not doing half as much as I do, but is advancing at the same pace, then of course I get frustrated, I disengage. And that's also something that we now see in the data very, very strongly. So for instance, in a, in a survey we ran here in Brazil, um, we found that about 50% of public servants agreed that no matter what they do, their salary will only increase over time. So they felt like there's really no way for them to, to, to get ahead, to, to, to sort of improve their material prospects with better work. Now, this is very suggestive evidence. We didn't have a great response rate to this survey. It's about 2,500 public servants. But it does suggest that, that a substantial fraction of public servants don't sense that they really have performance incentives. And when we do a regression analysis, we also find that those public servants then tend to be less motivated to work hard. And that's, of course, also something we would expect because they have less of an incentive to work hard. Now, that also means that as a second sort of challenge in civil service in developing countries is to try to ensure some incentives for work hard, to, for, for working hard. Avoiding these sort of pitfalls of excessive incentives that you, that you have when there's gaming and cheating, but giving public servants some sense that if they work harder, their, their prospects will improve in some way. Now, if you introduce these incentives, then automatically you're also creating or you might contribute to a third core challenge that we see in the data for civil services in developing countries. And that third challenge is related to the fact that most people don't work hard only because they face incentives, but most people actually work hard for other reasons. They work hard because they feel like they're, they, well, they work hard for, for, for other sort of sources of work motivation. One is they work hard because they actually like their job. So they, they, they go to their job and they enjoy what they're doing. They enjoy what they're doing because they can use a variety of skills. They enjoy what they're doing because they get an immediate sense of accomplishing something at work. They, they enjoy their work because they have some control of what they're doing. They can participate in how the organization is performing. And all of that, of course, gives them, gives them this intrinsic motivation then to put in effort. Or they enjoy their work because of another reason, because it gives them purpose and gives, it gives them identity. This is what we think of when we think of public service motivation, that you work hard because it's part of your own identity that you want to contribute to society, and that's what propels you to put in effort. Now, the risk of course also with incentives is that you might crowd out some of, these, some of these sources of motivation. But of course, civil service management practices can affect these motivations in, in, in much broader ways. What we see in many, many developing countries is a prevalence of factors that don't lead to these intrinsic or public service oriented uh, forms of motivation, but lead to the opposite. So for instance, in, in, in many developing countries, it's very hard to instill public service motivation in public employees because governments oftentimes, or society oftentimes, senses contempt for governments or at least distrusts government. And so you as a manager, for you, it's very hard to instill a sense of purpose, a sense of mission in your public employees if they work for a government once they leave the office. They're basically hearing by citizens and by the media that government is terrible. So this is a particular challenge. A second demotivator that you have in many uh, developing country governments is that leadership is not exercised with work motivation in mind. So traditionally, the way, the, 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 the way that leadership was exercised in bureaucracies was very hierarchical and very control focused. But if we think about sources of motivation, of course, we don't think of control. We think of giving people autonomy so that they can decide how to solve a problem. That's what motivates them. We don't think of control. If we think about motivation, we want to think about giving people a chance to participate uh, in decision making in an organization, giving them voice. Uh, that, of course, gives them a sense of commitment to the organization. It motivates them. But if we think about hierarchical decision making, hierarchical leadership, we're not thinking of that. We're thinking about top down decision making, not giving people voice. Uh, and so just to give you, give you sort of one, one piece of evidence for that, uh, in the survey in Brazil, and again, this is a survey with, with a small number of people, 2,500 people, might not be representative, but at least those people responded to us that, in essence, less than a third, and in some instances only 25% of public servants sensed that in their institution, uh, management encourages a culture of, of sort of open dialogue where they can voice their opinions, uh, less than a third sensed that, um, uh, that management really listens to the concerns of employees. So in other words, for most public servants, there wasn't anything like, like participatory leadership that would give them a chance to participate in the organization that would motivate them. Uh, and that's, of course, something that can, that can again demotivate public employees. And that's, again, something we also see in the data in Brazil. Uh, so in short, then, the, 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 the talk I gave here was about trying to make civil services work. 
And what we see from the data is that there are at least three core challenges and then also three solutions. And that is to try to depoliticize the civil service, uh, to try to introduce some performance incentives, giving public servants some sense that harder work has some benefit for them. Uh, and lastly, to address these, to try to address these intrinsic or public service demotivators. For instance, through participatory leadership, for instance, through designing jobs that are not focused on controlling employees, but focused on motivating them. So that's what I was here for, and uh, I appreciated the invitation. Thank you.